Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're checking out one of the most fun 7.62x39 weapons in Tarkov, the RPD. This was a new entry in patch 14, and of course it's not meta, but it does have some interesting features that make it very entertaining to use. Before we delve into the nitty gritty, it is important to understand the sheer vibes of this gun, and why I love it so much. You can only equip it with a 100 round drum mag, there are no smaller magazines at all and this does end up being quite a big benefit for solo players and there is only the option for full auto, semi auto simply doesn't exist on the RPD so this gives you an idea of how it was meant to be used. Did I mention that it can't jam either? Yeah you can probably see where this is going. Another cool feature of the RPD is that it does actually have the fastest fire rate of all of the 7.62x39 weapons with 700 RPM, as we are yet to see another gun in this caliber with this fire rate, and these features combined together make for an interesting experience to say the least. There are two versions of this weapon, the RPD itself, which is accessible on Prapol 3 for 90,000 rubles, and the RPD-N on Mechanic 3 as a barter for a military circuit board and a cyclone, which comes to around 85k at the time of this video. The major difference between these two weapons is that, as usual, the N signifies a dovetail rail, so if you buy one from Praport, you're just going to have to use the gun as it is with the iron sights, whereas the version from Mechanic allows you to add a rail, which then means that we can use sights of some kind. For this reason, I think that we should always stick with Mechanic's version, because there's no other way to get the RPD or the RPD-N other than in Raid, because they are also banned from the flea market. So, looking at the weapon itself, the other major difference between Mechanic's version and Prapple's is the barrel length. The two barrels are replaceable between the two variants, and Mechanic's one comes with the shorter version, which has very slightly more recoil, although it isn't really that much, 78 to 81 is kind of meaningless in the new recoil model. While on the face of it, it does look like the ergonomics is the same between these two, one of the reasons for this is that the mechanic one is missing the RPD barrel thread protector which you can add yourself for two ergonomics at under a thousand rubles, and also because it has the OKP7 as standard, which is one of the worst sites for ergonomics because it removes four. Making these changes gets us to 33, so the ergonomics is pretty bad anyway, and with the weight of the gun being 6.3 kilograms empty and with no sights, it doesn't really matter what you do to it, it's going to be a cumbersome beast one way or another. On this basis, if you do want to go for the longer version, you can simply swap over the barrel and buy it from Prapor level 3 for 11,000 rubles, and then there's a bipod as well for another 4k, although I feel like the extra 3 ergo may or may not be worth the half kilogram of weight, kind of depends on how you feel about it. What is interesting about the longer barrel though, is that the MOA, i.e. the accuracy of the weapon at longer ranges, is unexpectedly quite good. The lower the MOA, the better the weapon is at hitting the same spot over distance, and the RPD's long barrel gets this to 1.33 as opposed to 2.13 when you have the shorter one on. 2.13 still isn't actually that bad, but 1.31 comes in the realm of a lot of the other DMRs in Tarkov. For example, the base SR25 has 1.59, the TX15 has 1.38, the RSAS has 0.77 which is extremely good, the 762 Black MDR has 1.46 and the Scar H with a long barrel has 1.27. So if you equip the RPD with an adequate scope, you can hit people relatively easily at medium to long distances. It also increases the muzzle velocity of 762 bullets over what you see as their rated speed. For example, PP, which I would determine as basically the staple cartridge in the game right now once you have max traders, has a default bullet velocity of 732 meters per second, which is not that slow, but it's also not that fast once you start going over 100 meters. Equipped in the RPD though with the long barrel, and this jumps up to 826 meters per second instead, which is getting quite quick. I've not used it as a DMR sniper myself, but it's fun that you could if you wanted to. Regardless of which way you do end up going, you'll want to add a rail at the back of the RPDN to put on a sight. Classics like the PSO are also available, however not many rails are, and because we are so limited on modding with the rest of the gun, I do think that the Cobra is the best here. The main reason for this is that you get a rail on the side as well, so that you can add a laser or a flashlight to help out in close combat situations alongside the sight of your choice on top. As per my flashlights video, I now tend to use the WMX200 because this adds a point fire bonus in both of its modes and then on top you can decide what you want to go for, something like a holographic or something a little bit longer range, although you are again a little bit limited in what you can use. Sights like the Elcan or the Valde fit natively, but if you want to add one of the ringed LPVOs, you have to add the LaRue Tactical Picatinny Riser first before it will accept a 30mm ring mount, which of course we'll need to add if you want to put on something like the Voodoo and all the other ones that can be attached. Outside of one times is, I've tended to stick with the Elcan and the Valde so far, but again it's an option if you want more reach. 
So when we're using the RPD, it will become obvious almost immediately that the reload time is extremely high. Although you don't need to reload very often, if you do end up getting stuck, it can be the difference between life and death because it takes approximately 10 seconds to get this completed from start to finish. To compound on this, there are only a few rigs that will allow you to reload properly. The only non-armoured rig is the LBT load bearing rig which has two square four slotters because only having one means that the existing magazine will fall on the floor when you reload. So you either have to take the LBT rig or use an armoured rig like the TV-110, the Cry AVS, the ANA Tactical M1 or the Bagari which have two slots and this limits your choice of loadout quite significantly. However, if you load from your backpack in the inventory, the game will actually put the old magazine also back into your bag, which is really quite nice. This means that you don't need to take a specific set of loadouts with you to reload the gun, and you just reload using the inventory. Given that you don't reload it very often, with the RPD I feel like this is probably okay. The second part to this is a little bit cheesy. The technique is similar to the one for the Mosin or the SKS, guns which you may have noticed lose a round when you reload with the proper animation. This can be avoided by switching to another weapon and reloading them using the inventory, and the RPD is no different, except this time we're using this mechanic to avoid the 10 second reload time. You can do this with the second gun by switching to it first, but an even better way is to swap the slot of your primary into the second slot on your back, as this leaves your hands free. Then we right click reload on the magazine itself and then we swap the gun back into the primary slot again. This is significantly faster than reloading the gun quote unquote properly and can really change the outcome of a fight. As for the ammo itself, 7.62x39 is a strange calibre in patch 14 because it went from peak performance down to something that many consider underperforming at this stage and it's primarily to do with the recoil rework and the armour changes. Many weapons with lower powered cartridges that previously struggled now can kill players because they penetrate through the soft armour instead around the plates, boosting the performance of guns that use these rounds. Simultaneously, the importance of penetration in the higher powered calibres is also not as important anymore. This hit a bullet like 762 BP from both ends because it sat in the sweet spot of two tapping class 5 armours to the chest 50% of the time with its pen of 47. But now, 47 pen isn't really that necessary, and rather than having 58 damage, you're more incentivized to take higher damaging bullets with around 80 instead, using something like 7.62x51. Combine this with the fact that 7.62x39 guns typically have very low fire rates, another factor which is more important in patch 14 by the way, and most of the hidden stats have gone away too, this means that weapons like your mutants are nowhere near as powerful as they were before, and have probably just fallen back in line with many of the other guns. This drastic change from being meta to just being ordinary now has surprised a lot of people, and I think this has made some players feel that the guns are even bugged in some way when they're actually just performing normally. It's only that now they don't have all these benefits that they're used to, and they have very mediocre recall stats in the new rework. For the RPD itself, you can probably get away with 7.62x39PS. This is quite a decent round with 35 pen, as it goes through all soft armors straight away, and the only thing that you might struggle a little bit with is bouncing off class 4 helmets. This is the reason why I think PP is probably the staple round for this particular caliber now, as it's purchasable directly for rubles on Prapple 4, which makes it really easy to run and accumulate enough bullets for. But unless you are very confident with not dying and losing it all, it's generally quite a good idea to have some PS underneath. The 100 round mags work quite well with a bunch of PP on top and stacking it that way just so that you don't have to buy mountains of PP and lose at least 200 per run because it is a relatively expensive bullet and you can only buy 120 at a time. Another interesting contender that some people are using and I did a little bit at the beginning of this wipe is 7.62x39 US. This one has 56 damage and 29 pen so it still goes through all of the class 3 soft armors but it has minus 30 recoil in its stats which makes the RPD shoot even more comfortably than it does with other cartridges. The big problem with US is that the RPD is zeroed for 7.62x39PS so if you start to shoot at larger distances, especially if you're using the longer barrel and trying to kill people at range, US will undershoot quite significantly because it only has a base projectile speed of 301 meters per second versus PS's 717. But at close range with a red dot, this can certainly be a fun option. So finally, let's check out how the RPD performed in a few raids. What if somebody spawns? This game really spawns somebody down here. Did they really do that? They would. RPD moments. 
RPD moment. Next. Maybe I'm just hearing things. Maybe I'm going crazy, but I feel like I can hear someone around in here. We've looked everywhere. What bullet? I was using... Well, I was, I was using PP, but... I ran out of PP quite quickly. Yeah, so it's PP stacked over. It's 25 PP stacked over the remainder of PS. Just get a triple chat. I'm like super paranoid that there's somebody around here. I really felt like I could hear somebody moving around. Guess not. I'll go and loot the actual boys in a minute. I want to loot the office first. It's funny that those guys... I mean, maybe they just didn't, like... Maybe they were looting the... Or wanted to loot the building or something. I don't, I don't know what really happened. I was not really expecting them, but I ended up seeing them early. It's kind of what got him caught. And then the second guy, like, maybe they were loading in or something? I don't really know. Not really sure what happened, but... Oh, hello. Rest of John. You just killed me and my friend. I'm so sorry. What what actually happened? My friend promised to let me know we were loading in and he didn't. <laughs> were you the uh were you the guy at the back or the guy at the front? I was the guy in the back. Oh I see. Yeah, you just didn't respond at all. I was like, huh. That seems strange. That sounds like an MP9N, if I'm honest. GG's we were impressed. <laughs> Oh, man. What you got in your vector? Your P6. Wow, you were ready. Holy moly, that's a lot of ammo. That's a lot of AP6.3. You've got so much ammo. I'm actually astounded how much ammunition you have. Then my friend doesn't want you to know level 6 plates. In the sides. Yeah, I mean, they're cheap anyway, right? the contacts. I don't want to wear the contacts though. I don't I don't like contacts. I think these the, these honestly these aren't very good headsets compared to this one. So I like this this keeps me alive. I don't need like the vendor value of 25k or whatever. How does the RPT handle recall it four times? It's like obviously not as good as the org. The org is insane. This looks like a raider gun. Like genuinely looks like a raider gun. I'd avoid using this personally. It only protects literally this square. Like the Thor because the Thor has I talk about this constantly, but because the Thor has thorax as well as front plate, back plate, it protects this section of your PMC all the way to the edge. Whereas with this guy, you don't, you mi you're missing part, like your PMC will come out like this, the thorax, and you're missing this edge. I feel like you don't lose anything by doing it. Oh my word! The lack of ergo on this is uh, starting to hurt. I wonder if this is any better, let's see. How, how does the vector feel? Giga mid raid loadout reviews are great. I mean, yeah, I, I don't... Like, the M1 also suffers from the same... Oh, no, no, sorry. The M1's fine. The M1 is fine. But the M1 has level 2 soft armor. The M2 is better because it now has class 3 soft instead. Yeah, these class 6 side plates are fine. This is class 5 front, which is all right. Um, all right, okay. So um, we've, we've vastly lost track of what's going on here in this raid. I genuinely think I'm going to keep out the vector. <laughs> like, in all seriousness. I mean, that is cool. To be fair, that is quite cool. And to keep out the vector. The other thing, I just can't ADS the R RPD <clears throat> anymore. I'm too heavy. But I'm not unlike mule level of territory. So I can always swap to it. If there's like a pitch battle, I can swap to the RPD. Or like a long range shot required, I can swap to it. But right now, I don't. I feel like I'm better off just holding the vector in case I get jumped. We haven't. Boy. Okay, this exactly. boy up here or is it oh, it's gonna be a sniper boy could be sometimes they duck i'm not going over there anyway so i could just like run jump through here avoid him oh it's open already oh, oh, oh it's open already people briefly they can have some stuff people postfully they got it coming you know
but why? Whoa, Jesus. Oh, it is Colon. Four guards. I haven't killed Colon Ty though. He's still here. Not one of these. Hmm. He doesn't want to come this way. Oh crap, no, 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 no! <laughs> okay. We did it! We did it, Reddit! We did it! <laughs> God is perfect for Colin Tsai? It actually is. Am I getting like aimbotted or something by scavs? You want to see if I can grab the loot? That's an actual player scout now. I love the nade push. Love the nade push. If you're on your own, just never put it... You can never... You can never fire it fast enough. Never get it fast enough if you're on your own. I know that way too well as a solo. Holy moly! It makes you want to play solo. God damn. Solo's hard though. Solo's so hard. When it, when it works, it's brilliant, but when it doesn't, it's brutal. This is now a loot session. Ah, oh, what happened here? So my back plate. Right, let's let's do this first, friends. So modding the back plate coming out. The granite BR4 is going in instead. Good. So now we're back to 100%. Perfect. Right, so that's what we're doing for now. What about this dude? <clears throat> yeah, deep pockets. Which side are they? Outside. I think we're, after this, we're just going to have to go. We're just going to have to go after this. I can't, t I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. This is too, it's too much for me. SJ6? Oh my god. Maybe I'll just like eat the SJ6. I don't even know at this point. That's not really worth much. Um, yeah, I'm just going to die. I'm going to die otherwise to random stuff. So let's, let's not. 
Can't take it any any finer. Take away, I know. I, there's other stuff I could do, but we're not going to do it at this point. We're so incredibly looted. We're looted beyond our wildest imagination here. Yeah, a bit of Kolontai action. We've killed Kolontai for the first time. All his guards. And hopefully I can get out without getting sniped from Pinewood Hotel. God. Where's my thing? Here we go. Here we go. Come on, baby. Let's do this. Can I make it without my without my stamina running out? No! Come on! Come on, let's do it. Hope you have room in your stash. Fortunately, I do. Look at that. That's like, that's the, the lootedest, kittediest raid ever. Look at that. That is massive. Hell of a raid. 762 by 39 isn't dead. 20, 28,000 XP. Look at that. We killed two boys at the beginning. Used the vector. Got a load of kills. Headshot Colantai and all his boys with the RPD. One of the best raids I've had this wipe. Right, here we go. That was somebody running over there. I guess it's quite good. They just like sprinted out and be like, like right across the road. Who doesn't love the sound of the RPD? I find the middle of the screen very hard to work out on this. Ooh. Even got that slight chain shake, you know, like the, the link of, of uh, ammo. Guess we can go through the pub, get into more action area. What, like, what? Uh, kind of things I've got. Crash site. Okay, well, crash site. I guess we can move that way, but. Yeah, I kind of wanted to get over to the Colontai area. That looks like in post office building. Oh, baby. Any more? Just the two? One of the RPD moments of all time. gonna have to quickly whip and dip these things I feel the other guy had a big bag on There's a pilgrim. I'm dead. Actually, you know what? I should kill this guy with this MP7. Because then. Ah!
least then I'm not signposting myself to every person ever. Hopefully. Base. Flat over. Right, what do I want? Crash site? See that or Klim off? Pop maybe crash site. Yeah. I don't know. Um here. Yeah. Where that's from. Meal time or die to box shot scav. If we can get there. 65Ks, it's like, well, go if we can. Oh, damn scavs. Someone inside the shop. I think, I think, I think. Yeah. Let's keep chugging along. Keep chugging along, baby. Let's do this. I'm trying to lose a bit of HP. You do lose HP with the mule. But it's not, not too bad. It's only 0.1 per second, so. Like six a minute. Not that much. Maybe your whole body too. Yeah, one taps with the RPD, for sure. Look at that though. Headshot, 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 headshot. The next up, go and check out my flashlights video as I changed what I was doing after researching all of it. Otherwise, as usual, big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.